In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on this Ford F-150 with the 5.4 liter V8. Let's get started. Now underneath the truck, you'll see the oil pan right here. It has a 16 millimeter drain plug. So let's grab a wrench or a socket and remove it and let the oil drain. Make sure you put the oil in a collection bucket so you can recycle it properly. Put your tool on there, break it free. It shouldn't be very tight. If it is, that means it's likely over tightened. Once you can get it by hand, keep upwards pressure on it. And as soon as you feel it get to the last thread, pull it out quickly. This will avoid as much of a mess as possible. And let's let it drain until it's completely done. It's down to a pretty slow and steady drip. So I'm going to cap it off. If you want to wait longer, go ahead. But I'm going to call this done. Thread the drain plug in. We're going to snug it up and then torque it. Clean up the area. I like to do this right before the drain bolt is about to completely bottom out so that any oil that's underneath the washer can get out. Of course, I'm going to do this again after. Just wipe it. That's snug. I'm going to leave it there. The torque for the drain plug is 17 foot-pounds. If you're not able to torque it, don't worry about it. Just give it at most a quarter of a turn after it bottoms out. As you can see, that quarter that I did with the ratchet basically got it right on to 17 foot-pounds. Now looking through the front, underneath the front bumper, you'll see the oil filter. It also has a little spout that it will drain on, so keep that in mind. It's nice because it's not going to get all over the frame. Just make sure you aim the collection bucket properly to catch the fluid. If you can't get it by hand, you're going to need an oil filter wrench. They make different styles. This is the strap style where it goes around and then uh, as you pull down on it, it grabs onto the filter. Although you are very limited on space here, so keep that in mind. my collection bucket ready to catch any fluid that might come out. Remove the filter. Pull this out. Inspect the oil filter housing where the filter goes on. Make sure there's no rubber gasket stuck on here. If it is, take it off because the filter should come with it, not the housing. So now just wipe off any excess oil that remains here. You want to have a nice clean surface for the new filter to seal on. If some starts dripping again, that's fine. But for now, I wanted to inspect it, make sure the threads are good here. Everything is clean, so we're ready to get the new filter on. Take a little bit of oil and put it on the O-ring here on the gasket. I'm not going to fill the filter because it does sit sideways and most of it will spill out, even though usually I do like to pre-fill them. In this case, it's not going to work. Grab the new oil filter, put it in position here. Push the low radiator hose out of your way if you need to. Make sure that doesn't cross thread. It should thread on smoothly like this. And once it bottoms out, it even says it on the filter itself, go about half to three quarters of a turn. If you do it with a wrench, you will most likely over tighten it. There we go, just make it nice and snug by hand. Clean off any remaining oil that has dripped off. Now let's fill the engine up with oil. On the passenger side front, right between your battery and the air intake, you'll see the oil filler cap. On it, it says exactly what type of oil to use or what weight, what viscosity. It's 5W20. Take the oil filler cap off, set it aside, and then put in seven quarts of 5W20. With all seven quarts in, put the oil filler cap back, make sure it's locked in, and let's check the oil level. On the driver's side, you'll see the yellow dipstick. That's the oil dipstick. Take it out. I like to wipe it off as it comes out. And just so you have a reference as to what we're looking for, the dot at the top is the full mark. The one at the bottom is the low mark. You want to be anywhere in between the two, but right on the top is actually preferred. So let's dip it back into the dipstick tube and see where we're at. Bring it all the way down and then take it back out without wiping it this time because we want to take a reading of what it measured. 
It's hard to see on camera, but we are right above the full mark actually, right about here, and that's perfect. That's where we want to be. The engine hasn't started. The oil filter is not full yet, so once we start it, it should drop right about here. So this is actually perfect. Let's put this back. Stick it all the way in, and there we go. To complete the oil change, let's reset the maintenance reminder or oil change reminder. Turn the ignition to the on position. You don't have to turn the truck on for this. On the center screen, you'll see a bunch of different pop-ups pop up, including this oil change required. So to reset that, you go over here where you have your uh, buttons, but this layout will be different depending on what trim you have or if you even have the navigation package or not. Click the setup button and as you click it, you can switch through different things in the menu here. And uh, the second thing should actually be oil life. So right now we're at 0%. It, it's uh, timed, so you have to be pretty quick when doing this. But at this point, you have to hold the reset button. And uh, I have to go back into it because it timed out. Hold the reset button. And after a couple seconds, there we go, it's reset to 100%. So that's how we know that the oil change reminder has been reset. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.